Have you ever wondered whether more dogs have ears that stick up or ears that flop down? Imagine that I wanted to research this and come up with a definitive percentage of each type of ears. The most straightforward way to learn the answer would be to check every single dog in the world and count, but that's impractical. So I have to choose a small set of dogs to study, making sure it's a representative mix of different types of dogs, count their ear types, and then make informed predictions about whether or not my small sample matches the broader population. To get this right, I have to choose the right number of dogs to sample. So how do I choose that sample size? In quantitative UX research studies, we're doing something similar. We're counting various things that users do, like task success rates or time on task. We typically suggest going with 40 participants for most quantitative usability studies. It's a good default for these benchmarking studies where we're collecting these sorts of task metrics. You might wonder why 40 participants and not 20 or 50 or even 100. It's based on a few simple statistical assumptions. So let's break them down using our dog study as an example. First, when I count upright ears versus floppy ears, that's a binary metric. We either count up or down for each dog's ears. Let's say I do my study and I find that 70% of dogs in my sample had floppy ears. But how sure am I that's not just random chance from the dogs I picked? If I ran my study a second time or a third or a fourth, I might get a different mix of ear types. My numbers might change. That means there's an inherent fuzziness to the measurement anytime I'm sampling rather than checking the entire population. We can calculate that uncertainty around our measurement, and that's called the margin of error. Even though I measured 70% of dogs have floppy ears, I might have a 15% margin of error, which means the true number of floppy-eared dogs in the world could be anywhere from 55% to 85%. We don't know for sure. We call that range a confidence interval. It's just twice the margin of error, including both the plus and minus sides. The other thing I can control is how probable it was that my results were random. Let's say I'm publishing my very serious dog ear study in a scientific journal. I would need it to be at least 95% likely that it wasn't a fluke. That's the confidence level, which is a measure of how much risk we're willing to take with our results. In UX work, we usually choose either 90 or 95% for this confidence level. Applying this to quantitative UX research studies where we can't study every possible user, we aim for a representative sample to measure metrics like task success, errors, or time on task. We then establish a confidence interval around these metrics, striving for a balance between precision, which would be a narrow confidence interval, and risk, ensuring that our findings are not just due to chance. But we also have to balance practicality, considering the time and budget constraints. So the number 40 is not arbitrary. It's calculated to achieve a 15% margin of error at a 95% confidence level for binary metrics, like ear position in dogs or task success in UX studies. It's actually 39 participants, but we round up to 40 to account for any potential dropouts. Usually, these binary metrics are the most difficult to deal with compared to continuous metrics, like dog weight or user time on task. So we use these to estimate our sample size. Thus, 40 participants is not arbitrary, but a strategic selection to guarantee the reliability and accuracy of our quantitative UX research findings. It's a great starting point for any quantitative benchmarking study. It gives us a really good balance of precision with a 15% margin of error, risk with a 95% confidence level, and practicality with only 40 participants to recruit. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more of our UX videos, take a look at these over here and consider subscribing to our channel. On our website, nngroup.com, you can access our free library of over 2,000 articles. You can also register for one of our UX courses that offer live hands-on UX training.